to just get touch base with you guys, especially after, I mean, what seemed like a pretty significant year as far as everything choice went right before choice fest two, I think was the last time we talked. When did the idea for the gag come from and when did you guys kind of put that together and know what you wanted to do? I think we can safely reveal now. That, yeah, we can do the, I think we can do the full reveal. This is a big reveal that uh, the week of Choice Fest, even while we were talking to you guys, uh, Dave had COVID. So so when he played and it was an outdoor show for everybody who's concerned. And, and he, he, was played, his day, he was past his days, but he and his right. family were going through that, you know, week to week process. Yeah, he he was uh, he was cleared by the CDC. I want to be clear, but we up until then weren't sure how he was. We were like, he had given the like tacit like, I think I'm gonna play, you know. But like even like when Llama, you were like, yeah, I got a pack for Choice Fest, you know. When we were talking, I was like, I really hope it happens. Oh, like no. it was a little bit of a stressful week for us, um, and so we didn't get to rehearse like we didn't see dave that whole week until we were on stage together which um kind of we've now learned makes for good shows weirdly i don't want it to be like too much of a habit but like the sort of thrill the thrill of risk there uh turns out it, it uh it makes for good shows so so that that we we initially wanted to debut some new tunes in that set um, but then we realized that like we weren't going to get to practice that much. We kind of had to rely on some of the older material. Therefore, the gag was born, you know. Uh, and uh, we relayed it. We learned obviously the cover uh, without Dave. He loved the idea. He was on board. He learned it in the confines of his own home, and uh, that that was it. We'll see if it ever gets busted out again. You know, I th I think the rule is we can never rehearse it, at least as a full band. It does get played. <laughs> It does bring up an interesting uh, nundrum because everything was backwards except for the Dave test. It was a, a yes instead of a no. Right. That that was more opposite than backwards. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know if it was a statement hindsight's 2020 or like it was that cold play video where everything goes backwards and goes right again. So it becomes a yes. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I think, um, Dave, who, who has a big show tonight, so he couldn't join us. Um, he, you know, hey, you never, sometimes you never know. You know, as, as written about in the Chronicle, what, how do you pass the Dave test? How do you not? Honestly, it's getting more and more mysterious to me. I used to know, but now it's more and more uh, really up to Dave. And spiritual. Honestly, we have no control over what happens there. And there's been a couple times where we sort of said, okay, well, maybe we'll do a, you know, we'll do a yes or no tonight. And so we, I think it's a, you know, like, oh, okay, I know it's coming. And then Dave just can't help himself. He cannot, and he just switches it up. Uh, so now, now the rules are totally his court. He's jamming with the audience as much as he's jamming with us in that moment. That's the only thing. I, and I, I, I'm not speaking for him. It's just what I can tell from my experience on the stage, you know? So do, do you treat it more like a uh, baseball average than a actual, like, yes or no? As far as cumulative, if you took like an entire year of Dave's. I mean, I, I would say, you know, like this isn't exactly what you asked, Lama, but like just to say that failing the test is inherently bad. You know what I mean? Like, like we've reached the point where we definitely got some like some some no calls from the audience. And I, I don't think it's because they don't like the performance or whatever. You know, I'm only guessing, but I think it's because they want to see what happens during a no you know you're always going to have you're always going to have those you know well i think it's like that no that happened in the boston show you guys went from the no into every bubble dropping into it was such a cool way of getting from the like the breakdown of the no into the next song there's reasons to go with the no sometimes <laughs>
was Philly a pass or a fail? Philly was a fail. That was the- that was overwhelmingly Philly crowd energy. <laughs> of like, it didn't matter. like we, we were playing well. That was a great show and everything, and the energy was awesome. But I think just being like Philly fans are like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> like, <laughs> you, know, to say no. you know, you can make an argument for that being the best crowd of the tour. I mean, yeah, 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 totally. No, no, gave a resounding right. no. You know, yeah. That energy was off the hook in Philly. I will say that was fun. <laughs> yeah, the, the disco biscuits question right there, like right after, was just pure. Like it, it fit the moment. <laughs> We got love. We got love for Bisco. I think there's there's oh, for like, sure much love for for Brownie and Dallas. You know, yeah. I, and I got you guys when you do shout out bands, it's always uh, God Street Wine, ones that aren't so much uh, mainstream. You know, so I think I think you're doing the community a service. That's what that's doing the community service is like the whole. <laughs> it's the thesis yeah. statement. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, you know, you reminded me, Lama, the other day. You posted an old flyer. Of- and it was a slogan that, that didn't quite catch for us, but not the jam band that we need, but the jam band we deserve. And uh, I think I stand behind that still, you know? Right. It's trying to be the, the jam band you deserve, you know? Exactly. Real quick, wrapping up on Choice Fest, is there plans for year three? We're going to play every note of last year's set backwards, like <laughs> note for note backwards. But then I don't know how you designate that set list wise, you know. But we we've been working on it. We've been working on it since since the the moment the good. Set. Yeah, <laughs> I will say one of the coolest parts about Choice Fest though are the bands that you guys get to play. Like this year's lineup was really fun. Like it was really a cool that whole like orchestra that was on stage or whatever with the the sheet music. Like that was fantastic. Like, it was really yeah a lot of fun. Yeah. And Color Green was that what their name yeah, was? Yeah, Color Green. One? I totally became a fan of that band. Like that was the yeah. coolest thing is finding new music yeah. to get into and listen to. And you guys have done a good job both years getting cool other bands to play. I think we're we'd love to do Choice Fest. I think not, there's no that's way too far out <laughs> in terms of what uh, right. we can plan at the moment. But um, I would we will we will certainly try. And there will way. be another Choice Fest. I can guarantee. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. of course. Before we move on, I want to talk about history real quick. Who's was a troll who decided to put a one second donor rap on the uh, record to open it. I forget. I mean, it's funny to me that it went over as such a like uh, trolling, uh, you know, thing because it was just earnest. You know, it was the it was the it was the way that the piece fit with the record at the time, man. You know, man. I thought I had missed it or something because I, I listened to it on vinyl before I looked at it on Bandcamp. It just went straight into let your eyes adjust the light. Which when are you guys gonna play that? Is that gonna ever see the stage? We're working on it. You gotta keep coming to shows to find yeah, yeah. out. You know, <laughs> it'll be a bust out. We're gonna bust it. Yeah, but that transition though was is just oh, that's money. There was something the hit in the history of because it was conceived as as you know like uh, one vinyl. So there's limited real estate. No pun intended uh they're in that um that you know like donor's kind of a beast and I, like we there we wanted i think to include it because it feels like such a signature song and it's like such an, such an important song for us it was we played it at our first show we it's always like felt like really I, I don't know like to me anyways like very foundational um that like we wanted to include it but then we weren't sure how to do it and then i forget who it was it might have been dave was just like well, why don't we just do the lick and like that was like then it was like fun. It was fun a way to both like honor that, but include all this other stuff that we wanted to get to, and yeah, like leave, you know, leave um, for people who who are finding the tapes and coming to the shows and stuff. That like that that's the funniest version to me is if someone listens to history of, I don't know if this happens with us, but if someone listens to history of first and it's like, 
oh, that's weird. Okay, whatever. And then they hear that at the show and like, it's such a different experience. <laughs> that that <laughs> feels like a very attractive thing. That would, yeah, that would be crazy. It's like how you open Union Pool those set two without just a quick little donor rap. It can happen anywhere. You know, donor rap is a sort of a stream of consciousness that's always occurring and you can tap in, you know, whenever you choose to. Tap into the rap whenever. <laughs> tap, tap, tap the rap. The, the, rap. Rap, the rap is constantly rapping. You know? I feel like that's a, that's that's a theme though with a couple of the songs. Like I feel like sometimes man is yeah. always is always lingering. It's kind of always there now around. Sometimes man is around. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Around. he's around for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Who is sometimes man? That's a great question, and uh, I think more will be revealed uh, in the in the year to come. What was it like playing Outside Lands? You know, there's no surviving tape from Outside Lands. Although there might be a very, very, very blown out, unlistenable recording that is, that an enterprising taper might want to struggle through listening to to decipher a set list. I think when, when Choice Cast comes out 50 years from now, um, and they're sort of reliving their career, you know, in order, someone will go through it and the host will be like, excuse the poor quality, but this, you know, or, you know, maybe it gets its own bootleg release similar to, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the legendary amp tapes of the Velvet Underground, where somebody just put a tape recorder on Lou Reed's amp, and all you can hear is a blown out, extremely distorted electric guitar, and it is beloved by the, like, harsh noise, uh, experimental rock community, you know. Uh, maybe we'll have to develop an alias and seed that and be like, oh, we have no idea who did that. Um, <laughs> Or uh, you guys can do it. <laughs> but uh, but um, it's a great festival, and we got to play in Golden Gate Park, which for any jam band, you know, what higher honor could there be? Hopefully there's more big festivals like that in, in, in the future for Tabor's Choice. We would love that. And honestly, it was like I was, you know, like when we do our own shows, you know, uh, presumably the people that are coming, like, understand what we're doing. You know, so there's like a certain self-selection, like, that they're ready to enjoy it or, you know, it's like not this weird thing, but then for a festival, especially a festival like that, that's, that's like a little more, more mainstream and, and has such a wide variety that like to just do like straight up jam band shit, like we're doing, I like had no idea what people were like, how these are, you know, to, to normies or whatever, like, what are these people going to think of, of this thing? But then actually I was surprised how well it went down. Yeah. It seemed to translate well to some unsuspecting regular festival fans. Yeah, like you, honestly, I saw like one person, which is enough. It's like we're, you know, I've kind of like looked to their friend, like, oh yeah, like not having no idea who, who or what we are or what the thing is that we're trying to do. I can't tell you how many shows on the road that so many people. That was like the first time seeing you guys, obviously, because there hasn't been a lot of exposure on the east for you guys, but. For a lot of those people that come and talk to me at the merch deal, we're like, oh, these guys are great. Like, this is the first time I've seen them. Or would say something like, oh, I found out about them through your guys' YouTube channel listening to them. And this is the first time seeing them. They're even better live. There's something inherent in the music and the way you guys play it that really brings people in. It's kind of a behind the scenes, behind the curtain, off the cuff sort of uh, mantra for us. Taper's Choice. We're better than you think we are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> even if you already think we're good, we're even better than that. It's definitely better than it should be. I don't think yeah. that. <laughs> I like better it. than it needs to be. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, okay, we'll jump in a tour. Um, if you're cool. If you're yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
You know as much as we do, man. I know a lot of like what I saw, but any big moments that stick out for you guys personally? I think that in general, like speaking really earnestly for a second, like the tour felt really good. It felt really like, cause it was sort of one thing we played a lot in LA and to sort of like build a kind of like small local following. But, um, you know, we were able to, you know, I would say that the, like the Taver's Choice fan community is small, but growing and fierce. And there's more people than we've met, I think, obviously, and they'll probably jump in the comments and yell, come to Chicago or come to Seattle, as two of you are wont to do all the time. But, uh, but you know, uh, we got to meet a lot of people in person uh, who we who maybe whose like handles we recognize from the Internet. And we got to like feel sort of support of more people than I think we had anticipated, which just felt like. It felt really good. It felt really amazing to like get out there and do that. It felt like, you know, like this, like sort of like Philly show that we're talking about or even Providence, which was like a really small crowd, but like the energy coming off the crowds was really strong. And that was really inspiring for us to like, you know, keep doing what we're doing. So I don't know. We're, we're going to go on tour again, obviously at some juncture, but you'll never forget your first tour, you know? Right. I won't. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll give a specific one because because Alex did a nice Ernest General, um, Big Brown the Barn Show, which weirdly enough, I'm just kind of sitting on my studio thing, I've got the tape copy, uh, Boogie at Big Brown. Um, that uh, I don't know. There's something it was you know like kind of hard to find, not a like just this like really vibey atmosphere um, from obviously the, the hosts you know uh, to the show to feeling like for me personally, like the touring that I've done for a long time has been, we got like pretty organized pretty quickly in a way that is awesome, obviously, but I sort of, I still like that sort of fly by the cedar pants. Like when you're, you're we're pulling up to that like dirt long driveway and like, uh, what's the barn going to look like? I have no idea. And then it turns out to be awesome. And you know, like the, I thought the vibe there was really cool. That's something that, that was really special to me and almost like, in a way, when I was daydreaming about being in a jam band in high school, that was kind of what I envisioned. Except I was playing guitar in those dreams, but, you know. Whatever. I mean, that, yeah, definitely. Like, that show was, was really special in terms of the whole feel of, like, it had this kind of, like, early freaks, grassroots kind of energy of, like, coming down and, like, all right, we're going to figure out where to park everybody in this field. Like, tons of Subarus and Priuses with stickers on the back of them, you know, coming and parking in a grass lot. You know, that was definitely, like, oh, we're really doing the thing here. Oh, and, and between between uh, some opening sets, there was four bands that day. Bet I think between the second and third band, someone was sitting in the, their open back of their, like, Ford Explorer or whatever, playing a Taper's Choice live That's show today. That's right. Ah, how can you beat that? Yeah. How can you beat that? That's a moment. See, that's great. That was definitely a moment for sure. Yeah. talked a little bit about Providence before as being, but like a show that stands out for you guys is kind of the highlight of the tour. For me, it was like, I mean, there were, well, so that one we just talked about, honestly, the, uh, the union pool shows were great. They, they don't maybe get as much credit because they were, they didn't feel like tours because we hadn't driven anywhere yet. But you know, it's like to, it was kind of like, like I saw a guy in a flat brim with, 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 vinyl pins on it like saying like arguing with the door person like are you serious i can't get in like there's no ticket like those are all kind of like iconic moments for me of like oh man man we were really like building a jam band thing here like just the amount of people that showed up in new york city was like really heartwarming awesome the nyc freaks were there on mass it felt really good uh those shows can't be discounted you know the other ones had a little more shine on them because it kind of had that like get in the car and go sort of adventure feeling so like i mean philly 
Philly was great and revealed itself to be like positively like a place worth going back to again and again. Uh, that show felt really good to me. Providence felt special just because it was so different, you know, like, and like, it just like the seated theater vibe and Zach being in his hometown and, and our lighting designer Grant doing so much with so little, like there were a lot of elements that came together for there, for that one to, you know, and that, I think there were only like, I don't know, like 20 paid tickets for that show or something like that, but everybody was happy. Like the promoter wasn't mad about it. Like everybody was cool, which felt really good. You know, with that one, Providence has, that video has gone up, right? Yeah. It's, it's up. Yeah. You watch some of it. Yeah. I was Grant. Grant was crazy for that one. Like yeah. what, you know, cause like you sort of know what's you, stuff changing. You have like a vague sense of what it looks like, but then seeing the, the audience view, was like, Oh my God, he's like nailing this. And the light reading was like, so jam- a great venue, but it was like, it was very limited. Yeah. Uh, especially in a smaller well, venue of just what it, they don't usually have. What he was doing with some of that when you guys are like, the yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. you're like, Oh shit. guy at that venue is an old bandmate of mine which i didn't know before, oh, wow. we, before the day before the show like i knew i was gonna see him i knew he lived in providence i knew he worked at the venue even but we had played together in my band the freaks and he texted me the day before like hey what time are you get into providence i'm asking both as your friend and as your sound guy and i was like <laughs> which was pretty funny and, I, and so he knows grant because we're all kind of like friends from new york scene and i was like oh grant's gonna come and do some light stuff do you have anything and he was like yeah man but you know, there's nothing, there's nothing here. You know, this was like a small stage in the back of the Columbus theater with like four led lights that don't move literally maybe three, you know? And, uh, he was like, I was like, no, this guy's crazy. I've seen him do something with nothing. And yeah. And then like, you know, Jacob is the name of my friend. Like he was totally dumbfounded. He's like, you're right. Grant did it. Blew my mind. You know? Shout out to yeah, well, the first time he did anything yeah. at Union Pool blew my mind. I was like, dude, this is awesome. And then from then on, we kind of just had like this killer relationship. Like what he did at Nectar's, I think, was kind of the pinnacle because he had a good – There was a there, yeah, there, there. Yeah, yeah. that he had of any other night and really was able to have fun.
anything for UCT as far as a um, memorable show? Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny, like, kind of like Alex did, I could like think about it and then I'd probably like name them all. Like I'd kind of like, oh yeah, that was good. And then, oh, that was good. Uh, I do think it's for some, for whatever reason, Providence does stick out a little bit, not just because I've, I've seen it, a clip of it, but, um, the, I feel like it was cool cause it was Zach's hometown for a long time. So like, it was cool to see him have friends, a lot of people he knows. And then we were able to do his, you know, the solo intro, solo outro, which he's would I, as expected or amazing from him. Um, and I think that was the first time the song 21 miles really like clicked. That's true. Yeah. In a cool mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. you know, people, obviously the boards I'm sure are a fire with talking about the Providence miles. Um, <laughs> But, uh, as for, there's a few layers of that 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 one kind of makes me feel like that, that would be my answer even though I think they're all pretty good off a tour and having that first show back in LA and as an opening band how did that feel like weird and incongruent to open for the Walkman because like I guess you could get further away from us musically but like not much on a certain band you know and like I big up to the Walkman for asking us to do it because I think they knew that and they wanted to do it anyway so like super cool and uh we had a lot of fun and they're a great band and we're all huge fans so it was just kind of like an honor to do that and but we we sort of knew that like their fans wouldn't know what to make of us and i think they they like pleasantly didn't know what to make of us you know they, they were like i'm not sure what this is but uh cool you know it wasn't, <laughs> and, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't hostile for sure not at all it, and it sounded it wasn't rapturous it. rapturous but it wasn't hostile which I think they let was, us blow up h bong on the stage you know how cool and, and, yeah, and that, that was cool. Correct. That was fun, and it was nice and loud in there. It sounded good. So totally yeah. felt great. For me personally, Vampire Weekend opened for the Walkman like early on in our career. So that's like a real for me personally. That's a stepping stone that I like to check off. As it's a real uh, harbinger of what's cool. Come, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. When we get to MSG, just like Vampire Weekend has, we'll know it was all because. Let's talk about the ball real quick and we'll wrap it up with that. So Lam, any questions about the ball or you guys can talk? I agree with I agree with you though. I thought night one is I mean, no shade on night two, but night all. one as a player, you know, and and that's my own perspective. It's totally different from the audience perspective. But as a player, night one and I don't even know if the rest of the band felt this way. We're always all over the map. But I came off the stage after night one being like, that's the best show we've ever played. That's how I felt. You know.
I don't really remember to be honest. Like you, yeah. you guys sent some, you guys sent some questions over like, you know, like maybe we'll ask about like the tour and, and you know, what your favorite jams. And I was really trying to think today of like, I don't think maybe it's because I have two small kids or I, I don't know what the reasons are, but I'm like, man, it all, I, it all, I remember it's all feeling pretty good, but I have no. Well, <laughs> just like, just like Jerry said, man, once we play it, it's yours. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. It's, it's yours. not ours anymore. It's for you. I just like the whole vibe of, of of night two and the fun of it, and it, it, Dave singing. How 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 did that happen? I mean, that's probably what puts night two over the edge for me. Dave singing. Well, we'll let him know that you said that. He'll be very yeah. happy. To hear. We were gonna make sure that said that too. That let said like make Dave, like Dave sing, and then he came out and yeah. sang, and it was great. Yeah. We're like, oh, fantastic! I think he well, that one in particular was one he felt comfortable with. I know that he like. He, that's one like a strummer for him when he's at home or whatever. Uh, and I think that was maybe almost the inciting idea was like, well, okay, well, you can sing that one. It was an I'm emotional like, moment for him, though, because he's never sang in any band on stage. I don't think ever. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and I think it was something like, like he's always felt this sort of kinship with the dude. He, he's had an idea to do a Halloween Lebowski thing and other projects before. I think we kind of put it to him. We're like, we'll do it, but like, you got to sing Man and Me. Oh, okay. Or something like that. It was kind of like that sort of vibe. And he agreed. And I don't think he, I don't think he thought that we were really going to hold him to it, but he held up his end of the bargain, you know? Is that kind of where the idea for the Lebowski Halloween gag came from? I would say that Dave was a generating force for that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it was one of those ideas where if we can immediately riff two or three further ideas, then it feels like the original one is like solid. Like, okay, that's what we'll do. Um, and it felt good to like, instead of cover an album, cover a movie in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there was more participation. Like he participated this year in the gag and he wore the bowling outfit. And I even told him, I think that was the first night I didn't see him in a leather jacket and his patent Dave outfit. And he's like, I know it was kind of different. He's like, I was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Other than my beard, which regrettably I, I didn't feel feel comfortable shaving for the, for the bit. We were shockingly well cast as four major characters. I thought we looked pretty good. It was yeah. kind of so good. good. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So good. It really, you guys really pulled it off well. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. quick about scribble to wrap it up a little bit um acoustic how did that feel playing those songs that way and, and doing it and kind of doing a little bit different versions of them because i know like the donor rap i think sounded amazing it was a new spin on these songs that i thought sounded really cool yeah it was a little weird and i think in a good way <laughs> like um and like we were supposed to be outside and we we're in this kind of like very community center feel and with acoustic guitar and like hot bright lights on us like kind of felt like it felt sort of like I was back at like high school talent show performance vibes in a way that wasn't altogether bad. And I think we just kind of rolled with it. I'm dying to hear the tape, honestly, because I don't have a sense of how it sounded. And I know Joe's got a good tape of it that we haven't heard yet. So uh, I'm psyched for that to emerge. And uh, I think tapers acoustic uh, is an idea that can and will grow. I mean, I really want like a Washburn acoustic bass, not an upright. like. And a, a base with a hole in it <laughs> and uh see what that does for my plan you know yeah i will say opening with pino was i, I, I was not expecting <laughs> it yeah 
and and I think you pulled it off. I, you, it was great. It, it was. I was floored. Well, we I was listening our, through a We mixer. decided to you know put our prog hats on for the acoustic show. That's all I got. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you got to put on your prog hat. Sometimes you got to put on your jam hat. It sort of depends on the, on the atmosphere. release a video from it of the donor app but i put it only to our members that are members on the youtube channel but eventually that whole thing will come out too it's really cool like it's a really good show like I, it's it's it sounded great so that was very well, we're glad you were there to do yeah. more acoustic of it yeah it was very cool i was glad i was on the whole tour there's some really going back and like i said the venue guys you guys played are really special that was a really special run and to have all those documented and stuff i think it'll be really cool so yeah so if you know if you ever end up back in like msg for fish new year's or something it's just not gonna be the same you know, I know. Like, why are they playing Union Pool? Why are they playing a couple nights in Union Pool? Exactly. The, the small venues are where it's at. They're the best. It would be dangerous so. if they did that. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so real quick, and this is it. Next year, I know you guys have already got shit going with both other bands and other things, but what, what's the plan for the yeah, Tabor's Choice? Yeah, the, uh, the, the Tabor's Choice side projects are getting a little bit more active in uh, 2024, which is cool. Which, But I will say this. We, we planned for it. We knew it was coming. And... Uh, Choice business will continue, and we've got we've got. I'm not going to reveal too much here now, but we've got a plan of attack for how to dig in uh, in 2024. And you know what's also so cool about jam bands fans is their like ability to like branch out and like accept and take in all the projects. Well, I see you posting about all the stuff that Dave is doing. You're getting active in the real estate thread and the comments. I don't think I don't notice. I see that, and uh, you know we invite everybody to. To check out the side projects, but uh, but the chief focus will remain uh, Tabor's choice, you know, as it always has been. <laughs> and maybe one thing I can say is, in a way that will probably you know will reveal itself in time, we actually have revealed some stuff over the course of this interview. But that's true. You don't know what we revealed. It's probably <laughs> impossible for you to know, but you're right now. Yeah. But we in the future, a- when you look back on it, you'll say, ah, that's what they were saying there. <laughs> we're always dropping teases, you know, whether you know it or not. Yes. I like it. I like yeah. it. I'm excited for whatever what, what comes next year. I'm excited to get behind the merch table again. I'm excited to hit the road with you guys or whatever. It was a lot of fun. So, Lama, well, I mean, you got you to yeah. annotate this interview on the .net. Yeah. All right. You know, like, yeah. choice best question, comma. Uh, you know, you, we got to go through the whole thing. <laughs> I like, you, like uh, our, you know, very, very yeah. earnestly and, and, and as you should be, uh, you know, my, our, our, our dear friend over at Relic Magazine is referring to the dot net. He's like, Hey, uh, I need to send stuff over to the, uh, dot net for the, uh, high holidays performance. Uh, who runs that yeah. it needs to be notated, you know, like <laughs> the yeah. of the time. we certainly appreciate it. That should be yeah. said. Oh no. I, it, it's a blast doing it. The, the people I've met Kramer or, great guy i mean it's it's been great you know i think the choice community is welcoming and growing so well if if anybody is watching this who's involved in uh writing or putting together the uh the chronicle of the yeah. two, we love it i've read the whole thing keep it coming mm-hmm. thank you thank you yeah yeah it really came For out sure good. that was another that was yeah. a good one so yeah it's alive and well it was good between dot net and the the forum and, and on every yeah, yeah. It's alive and well. Things are moving. So oh, there's good. a forum. Yeah. Oh, I haven't. There is. I haven't. Uh, I haven't yeah. uh, posted up on the boards yet, but we'll yeah, send you. We'll send you the link. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. gonna have a burner yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that's not already taken. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, guys. Well, I won't right. keep you. Um, yeah. I appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Thank appreciate you, you stopping by. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. 
Are you carrying a card?